fire. We've been using it since before the dawn of civilization, and for all our modern technology, it remains a terrifying destructive force. Just a spark of electricity can turn an ordinary cotton shirt into a deadly fireball. The spark, of course, just starts the fire. It's the burning cotton that might kill you. Every year, a million Americans suffer burn injuries. Almost 6,000 are killed. But if you've got the right gear, fire doesn't have to be fatal. This is Westex in Chicago, Illinois. They've been making protective fabrics for over 50 years. Here, they take ordinary cotton and turn it into a strong, flame-resistant fabric that can protect its wearer from fires, sparks and electric arcs. Cotton's great for making clothes because it's soft, comfortable and cool. The trouble with cotton is that it catches fire at just 407 degrees Celsius. An electric arc flash can reach 19,000 degrees Celsius. That's three times the temperature on the surface of the sun. To resist that, a shirt needs to be more than stylish. The answer is to insert into each individual cotton fibre molecules of a flame retardant substance called Tetrachis Phosphonium Chloride, or THPC, to its friends. THPC reacts to high temperatures, turning the cotton into non-flammable carbon. So the orange cotton turns black but doesn't burn. THPC was first used in protective clothing by the steel industry in the 60s. Nowadays they even put it in your sofa and your bed to help stop your house from burning down. The fabric comes in any colour, as long as it's lurid, ready to be cut and stitched into a fetching new shirt. It looks just like any ordinary day glow orange shirt, but it's tough enough to handle an electric arc as hot as the sun. On the ordinary shirt, the flames spread rapidly, giving the wearer little chance of escaping serious injury. But the engineered THPC-infused flame-resistant fabric simply chars, stopping the fire spreading and extinguishing the flames. This makes it perfect protection for people doing potentially risky jobs like fixing power cables. But if you work somewhere really, really dangerous all the time, you need some really, really heavy-duty protection. Burns Harbor, Indiana. This is one of the most advanced steel mills in North America. It belongs to ArcelorMittal, the largest steel company in the world. Here they turn iron ore into steel for the automotive and construction industries. And to do it requires two massive blast furnaces. Inside this furnace sits over 6,000 tonnes of molten metal, bubbling away at over 1,000 degrees Celsius. For the workers here, wearing the funky Dayglow shirts on their own would be like walking through a molten monsoon in your underwear. Cut to Gentex in Pennsylvania. Here they make the material for these heavy-duty heat-proof anoraks known as primary protective clothing. This is the stuff to put on when you know things are going to get very, very hot. For a suit that can stop molten metal, no ordinary fabric will do. So instead of cotton, they weave their material out of a special kind of synthetic heat-resistant fibre called para-aramid. It's the same as Kevlar, the stuff they make bulletproof vests from. Pound for pound, it's five times stronger than steel, and at high tension, it's a lethal cutting tool. If you got your fingers caught in this loom, they'd be sliced clean off. This layer of clothing has to be able to resist splashes of molten metal. The synthetic fibre itself protects at up to 700 degrees Celsius, but so can a frying pan, and it doesn't stop the meat inside from getting cooked. To stop the humans from cooking, the suits also need a reflective surface that the heat just bounces off. 
You might think the featherweight metal that wraps your snacks wouldn't offer much protection, but aluminium is highly reflective and, crucially, wearable. A thin film of it is bonded to the fabric and the outer layer is finished. So, they've got a super strong material, but it's not going to make a super strong suit unless the seams are as tough as the rest of it. If they use any ordinary thread, the suit would fall apart in a fire. The only way to make the seam strong enough is to use the same tough aramid fibre they wove the outer garment from. Here at Super Tough Tailors Chicago Protective Apparel, the boss is justifiably proud of their life-saving suits. In all the years I never tire of it, it's really fun to watch a piece of material turn into a piece of clothing. I love to think that we keep people from burning themselves. Even after all the testing, there's only one way to know whether the super suits are really up to the job. Here at the Burns Harbor Steel Mill, they get their baptism of fire. Regan Woodard's life depends on her clothing. A mistake in the manufacturing would let the 1,000 degree temperatures of the furnace burn her to the bone. But with two layers of protective gear defending against flame, heat and molten metal, her firewalk is just a walk in the park. <laughs> 